Yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, my Serbian is also very weak, so so sorry. Dobro jutro, that's all. And uh, first, uh, I would like to speak in English, if you don't mind. So uh, let me introduce myself. I work for Cisco, so I'd like to introduce a very, very important problem to you. You already know very well. Uh, regarding DNS. So I don't want to go into the technical details now, but what we are doing now is just uh, connecting dots. So do you have any guess what uh, the picture shows? Yeah, so finally a bird, yeah. But in the first view, probably you, you cannot see immediately. So that's, uh, we need some like, um, like uh, artificial intelligence or something uh, a little bit deeper investigation. So. Uh, regarding my talk, I'd like to introduce this umbrella, very, very short, regarding the, the services. It is free of charge, you can use it, you can learn a lot of things from this one. Plus, uh, I'd like to introduce very, very quickly um, regarding the architecture and uh, regarding the algorithm behind this uh, service. So, uh, basically, it, it provides secure DNS uh, transactions and uh, resolutions, and uh, finally, we will I'd like to introduce a few examples where we could use this kind of algorithm so very, very quickly. So uh, regarding the Umbrella, Umbrella is a, it's a free of charge service uh, with, the, with this uh, like, um, um, like home users and, uh, and like parental control. So it's still available as an open DNS. So maybe you heard about uh, Cisco acquired open DNS and uh, still we are using quite heavily and investing a lot with this uh, uh, um, open DNS. The name is Umbrella. So based in the Umbrella, we can provide these services. By the way, what do you think about this, uh, uh, the volume of this uh, uh, DNS request? How many times we have like a DNS resolution or DNS request per day? I would say an average user. Do you have any guess? Just think it over how many times you are clicking uh, open a browser or something. A millions or a billion, thousands, yeah, it's not a bad guess. Like actually the average user uh, takes like 2,000. So that's, th this is not really a, b a bad uh, um, example. And this is the problem with this uh, uh, DNS resolution. So if you just visit one single site like CNN.com will open a lot of different uh, portals. Just opening one single portal, you have like uh, uh, 26 different domains, a resolution, resoluting a lot of other uh, portals and websites as well. So this is quite, quite difficult to even investigate one single uh, site with this one. The problem here with, with this, uh, uh, with the DNS, Typical organization don't monitor these uh, DNS requests. This is very, very, very huge problem, because this is looks like a uh, like a golden mine. So it is very, very important for security point of view to to investigate, even control it. So therefore, we are doing this one with the umbrella. This is the first layer of security, because just using the DNS. Um, protection and DNS uh, resolution and blocking this DNS, it helps a lot in security point of view. So, uh, yeah, let, let me introduce the, the umbrella very, very quickly. Um, so here we have like a worldwide um, service covering, uh, like we have different, like 30 different towers covering all of the worldwide services with a very, very easy, um, like uh, service introduction. So this is just uh, uh, like a global service covering all of these uh, things. And let me show you like why it is important to use it because if nothing else, just if you use just f fast uh, uh, DNS resolution, that's more than enough. I, I showed the picture. Uh, if you see uh, Umbrella is the second one, even worldwide point of view. If you think about the Europe, uh, this is also second one. So this is not a big deal. Uh, even if you can use it just for the uh, fast uh, DNS uh, uh, server, that is more than enough. So. Uh, Regarding the first one, uh, this is Cloudflare. This is, doesn't provide any security. So that's the problem with this, uh, the number one, because there is no like, uh, you know, security enforcement applied here. They are just, uh, you know, re a quick resolution. And uh, uh, the, yeah, this is just for the European things. And the, this is quite easy to, to apply this security countermeasure. So this is just the first step. You need to just change the DNS uh, server 
uh, configuration on the router pointing to the, the server nodes. Here we have IPv4, IPv6 addresses. That's all. Everything else managed through the uh, cloud. So you, here we have even uh, cloud services through this open DNS. You can do this uh, with the parental control and everything with the basic security point of view. So we, with the visibility, enforcement-wide deployment, you can do a lot of things. Basically, what, what we have here is two services. One, the name is Umbrella. That's the enforcement point. And there is another one which is called Investigate. Investigate is nothing else, just an open interface to the database. So it's very important this is a live service. We need to uh, like uh, investigate every single DNS request on the fly. So this is not like a static database we could share with you. Therefore, we have like an open interface. So investigate has like two type of uh, services, like graphical user interface, I will introduce very, very quickly. And there is an API interface as well. So for example, if you want to like block something through this uh, database, you can do a lot of things with these uh, services. So let's uh, continue with the big data. So this is the number of uh, the DNS requests per day we are serving. So just regarding the volume, it is close to 200 billion requests per day for the, I mean, the supported uh, um, customer set. Covering home users, I mean, parental users, uh, home user and enterprise users as well. It represents like two or three percent of the worldwide DNS traffic. So it's, it's relatively huge uh, volume. So basically, this is a perfect uh, like input just for the database, uh, the, the machine learning uh, data uh, algorithm. So therefore, we, we have a huge uh, volume, uh, just a few numbers. Uh, one, there was like 175 billion per request, uh, altogether like 90 uh, million uh, active users very, very closely, and now increasing quite heavily. So that was the open DNS uh, numbers. After the acquisition of Cisco, uh, increased a lot. So nowadays it's, it's more than 200 billion. So this is how we see the, the internet request and the in internet DNS uh, 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 names and domains. So this is not just the domain names, but we, we see the, the file hashes as well. So here we have a sandbox connection. So if the sandbox connection reporting like a malicious domain, we can see it and we can report and we can uh, monitor these ones. Plus the DGAs. DGA means domain generation algorithm results. So this is the new technique of uh, cyber criminals, how, how they can frequently changing the domains quite rapidly changing the domain resolutions and registering totally new domains. And you can even predict if, if you are quite clever. Okay, so this is what the DNS umbrella can do is just the recursive DNS services. So if, they, if, if there is a home users or there is a, a PC, you need just pointing to the DNS request to these services. And of course, it will uh, provide the DNS resolution to us to the other services. Of course, providing additional like security uh, countermeasure, uh, security services and controls. So for example, blocking uh, DNS hijacking, fast flux domains, for example, this is just quite rapidly changing the IP addresses. This is also more than suspicious. So this, this is typically not a, a valid service. If you are changing very, very rapidly the IP addresses behind a given domain, this is more than, uh, more than enough. A lot of different algorithms I will cover a little bit later right now. So it looks like a statistical models. Here we have a lot of different uh, PhDs and engineers working 24 hours, uh, I mean, defining these uh, malicious uh, activities based on these DNS requests. So I, a few um, like uh, statistical models I, I'd like to introduce, but not everything. Uh, just uh, I'd like to introduce the most important ones. Yeah, so this is how we, we see, for example, one given uh, domain, like blackhat.com. So here we, ha we see the connection pointing to the other domains as well. So for example, if the user is, uh, is visiting other domains in the same time or connection to the other IP addresses, or even ASN numbers, uh, uh, autonomous numbers, and we, you can see uh, the connection. <laughs> False positive is, it's, it's, it's very, very valid question. So you can, every customer can report the false positive on the website and or, uh, in, I mean, uh, engineers and uh, um, I mean, 
PhD scientist can, can work on the false positives. Of course, there are false positives because if, if you think about that, based on the algorithm, they can, of course, provide false positive, and uh, of course, immediately you can report. Exactly, exactly. plus uh, there is, I, I will cover a little bit later uh, if uh, the slide helps me. Uh, there is a totally new category, which is uh, called uh, newly seen domain. Newly seen domain, as you know, the, the term explains, it, it's a new category. So typically, if you think about uh, the very well-known services like Google, you know, Facebook, other services, they don't open every single day different domains, right? So this is typically not every day you are visiting a totally new site. So if uh, typically what they are doing, I mean, the cyber criminals, they need to uh, build an infrastructure. So therefore, they, they are opening quite heavily totally new domains. So one of the very, very good uh, technique is just put everything into the newly seen domain category. If it's totally new, uh, why? Because in this case, you can block it. Uh, this is a, like a temporary, a temporary uh, container just for this uh, uh, totally new uh, domains. And uh, that was a very, very good example. If, uh, do, do you remember uh, WannaCry? So the WannaCry had like a kill switch. So the kill switch was that a domain was uh, registered as a, like, uh, you know, um, blocking all, all of the activities. As somebody did it, finally registered this kill switch and blocked everything, I mean, with the, with the WannaCry. And that was the, a, a, a perfect, uh, like, uh, uh, an example how we can effectively blocking this kind of uh, new malwares and new, um, I mean, uh, cyber criminals activities. Not really. It's, it's, it is totally machine-based services. I wouldn't say machine learning because it's, it's, if we haven't seen a totally new domain, we put into the like a temporary category like a, a newly seen domain. And after like 24 hours, I tested with my customer uh, a totally new Hungarian um, like uh, domains. And in 24 hours, we recategorized into the right uh, category. If it is like a shopping, if it is, there is a, like, I don't know, advertisement site, it will be totally automatically categorized. But until this, it's a perfect category uh, matched, we have a full protection. One of the uh, algorithm is just a co-occurrence model. Co-occurrence is just uh, checking what is the, the connection between the domains you are visiting. So for example, if, uh, X is, is a malicious domain, probably if you are visiting like C and D uh, among very relatively short time frame, it's, there is a higher chance that these domains are connected to this uh, malware campaign. So therefore this could be uh, like uh, more than malicious, uh, these, these things. Okay, what do you think about these applications? Have you heard about like Shazam, Pandora and these kind of things? What they are doing? Any guess? They're dealing like uh, with voices or, you know, songs and these different things. So this is typically, it's a good, uh, like, recognition for us as well. Believe or not, but typically if you see the, you know, uh, the pattern of this DNS request, it helps a lot in the, uh, in the science as well. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Maybe I can draw. Okay, so... Uh, so the, the, the name is model is like spy crank model. Do you see even, even domain generation algorithm shows this kind of uh, pattern. If you see the exploit kits, you see the, these, uh, these spikes and phishing is this, this one. So even if you see nothing, just how this uh, DNS request uh, uh, patterns look like, that's more than enough for this uh, like, uh, recognition as well. Geolocation information helps a lot. For example, if there is a server in Serbia and uh, uh, like uh, the victims came from US, it's more than suspicious, right? It's probably, it cannot be a, a, like a legitimate service. Of course, nowadays it's, it's, uh, nobody knows where is the server is. That's, I fully understood. But typical, this is not a typical situation. For example, if there is a server in uh, Ukraine, that's more than enough, okay. That one is quite nice. Uh, live DGA prediction. So if you have a lot of information regarding the domains, like uh, visited domains, we can even predict what is the next one. The name is D DGA, like domain generation algorithm. 
if you have enough samples, enough examples with these DGAs, you can, you can calculate and you can calculate the next one. So this is how it works. A dot com and B dot com, you see a lot of things. And if you see the, like a seed function, how this DGA works, you can predict the next one. And even block before registering the, the new domain. That is very, very important because if you are absolutely sure that this should come from the DGA algorithm uh, output, you can block immediately before the registration. Yeah, like b.com. And if you see everything, even you can predict the other uh, DGA uh, outputs like this one. And we actually, we do it. Uh, if you have a, a malware campaign and if we can predict these totally new domains, we can actually block it in, on the fly. Okay. So this is the, I already mentioned this newly seen category. So if it is totally new domain, we can put into the new domain, a newly seen domain category until we can have more information. So the gentleman had this question. So using this newly seen domain, you can block a totally new um, domains in, this, in the world until we have a, a protection and full service with this, serv uh, with this category. So uh, regarding the new categories, I'd like to introduce two, two major ones. One is the malvertising. So probably you heard about how they, I mean, cyber criminals work. Typically, they are using like exploit kits. If you heard about, uh, the, there are some very, very famous ones, for example, rig exploit kit and angular exploit kit. So how they operate, how they infect uh, uh, victims. So typically they have like this one, infected sites or advertisement networks. Uh, and they have like a totally, like a, an industry, like a company, how they operate and how they build an infrastructure using this uh, exploit kit infection. And here, this is the chain of the advertisement uh, uh, things. And every single uh, steps could be infected with this malvertising uh, services. So, I mean, malvertising is just uh, sharing uh, malware uh, codes uh, to the victims, so therefore this uh, it could be quite interesting and quite uh, uh, dangerous. This is just one example. So if you uh, Jeps can, uh, for example, visit this site, immediately can redirect to another site, just uh, f showing that, for example, there is there is a problem with your PC. So you need to update your uh, Acrobat Reader or you know Java or anything what sitting on your network. Even they have like a tailored uh, setup as well. For example, if you have an Apple device, they can recognize, okay, you are an Apple, so therefore you need Apple antivirus. Quite nice story. So this is just one example, but this, yeah, you see? So in this case, you see that, for example, uh, flash update is needed. So it's a typical case, if, you see, if you're browsing the web, uh, you, you, you see every single day, almost. So this is just one example, but if you see this uh, advertisement campaigns, uh, yeah, here you see a few examples. They work like this one quite heavily. Uh, uh, this is another example. This is the tech support scam. So pointing or redirecting to the uh, tech uh, support that, okay, your PC is damaged, uh, infected, please do nothing, uh, or tech support will help you. So uh, this is the typical situation. This is another um, example of fake flash and Java updates. And if you see now, content free and uh, safe for update. So this is the click, I mean, this is the domain. Uh, they are expecting the user to click. And they are clicking, you know, that's not nothing a big deal. You know, if, are, if there is a human, you know, can read it, okay, safe and free, why not? That's that human thing, so what they are doing. And this is just uh, an example how this, uh, advertisement campaign um, tools look like. So here you can do a lot of things. You can configure the, even the uh, country code uh, and region code and you know, how, how we'd like to redirect using the iframe, what is the malware you would like to inspect, uh, in, in fact, using uh, this tool. So this is, looks like a, you, know, you, do, you don't need an educated user to create this kind of campaign uh, against the, the victims. So it can be very, very tailored as one, well, but if you want to infect uh, several millions of people, why not? You can do it. 
Okay, so this is just uh, an example from uh, the investigate story. So this is uh, uh, how this uh, um, domain look like. So for example, I just put content free and safe uh, dot star. Star means like a regex, you know. So here you can have a, a list uh, up to like 30 days, uh, as I remember. So here you see all of the domains. So they are changing the domains they are, because if uh, the, there is a firewall blocking one of them, okay, no problem, still we have a lot of other ones. So therefore this, uh, I, it looks like an industry. So therefore, the, the machine learning is needed here to, to like uh, uh, checking all of the, these things and these domains to block in, in one single shot. Okay, so if we see these, these words, you can classify, uh, which is somehow connected to, together. So, for example, if you think about the English words and terms like content, free, and apple, you can even predict that pineapple could be this, this, the ne next one. So, even this kind of uh, things uh, could be predicted by the machine learnings. So, uh, yeah, if you if we can use the, like synonym uh, typos and these kind of things, therefore, this this is the place for the uh, machine learning. So, for example, there is a domain. We calculate the three gram. Three gram means the three uh, letters together, like cont, o n t, n t e, t e, and, and and so on. And this one could be calculated the hash value. And based on the hash value, we can have like a locality sensitive hashing. This is just a calculation. What others other domains could could have here uh, based on the campaign. So this is just an example for these ones. So even from this given uh, domain, we can predict the other ones. So for example, content four. So do you see the four is moved from here to there, but even is the same campaign. So even you can block it based on this, uh, the, even the first uh, uh, domain, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you found this one. Okay, so for example, this could be the re result of the lexical clustering. So if you see this one, it could be like a fake update campaign, but the other one could be the tech support scam. Just based on the different uh, uh, domains, even you can predict what, is, uh, what could be, uh, even the next one or, you know, that, uh, what is the, uh, the category. Of course, here you can cluster the, the legitimate act advertisement campaign as well. So this is not like a, a magic things, but basically do, uh, the machine learning can do it. Okay, have you heard about the Puni code? No, nobody? That's, uh, it's a shame, <laughs> unfortunately. Why? Because that's, uh, if you think about the serial characters. So sometimes you need, uh, or somebody uh, from your country, they are using serial characters even for the domain. So the, the Puni code is just, uh, like uh, like this is the the picture from the puni which means like uh, small uh, things so this is just a representation of the unicode with the limited ascii character subset so in, even here you can have like serial characters or greek or something even turkey has special characters and if you would like to use in the domain names of course uh, dns doesn't provide uh, this kind of support so there is like a like a coding system and this is name is puni code so yeah, for example, this is like a, a thank you. Epharitus, this is like, uh, you know, the, the Greek word uh, for the thank you. And uh, this is like uh, how the, the users want to see uh, with the domains. So for example, uh, Alibaba, this is the Chinese, uh, you know, web shop uh, uh, site. And I mean, they prefer to use the, their uh, characters uh, their, uh, in the, their countries. This is the Japanese Ministry of Internal Affairs. You see, this is really a special characters, uh, not talking about Yandex, which, which is the Russian Google, you know, and this case, uh, I, probably it, this is the case in Serbia, so probably you would like to use your, your serial characters as well, right? So, uh, in the domain. So this is like a Puni code uh, translator as well. So if you, the user typed here into the domain, it will be translated to this one, to the uh, DNS server, because this, this is the, uh, you know, the DNS server can resolve and can use it. If you notice, this is starting with the X and the minus minus. But, uh, you know, if just blocking with all of the X and minus minus doesn't help. That, you know, it's a no, not a full service. Somehow you need to, some, uh, like, translate to the, the visible uh, format. So, uh, like a human things. So that's, that's uh, quite nice. Uh, just a few examples. Uh, would you click to this one, singaporeair.com? 
Somebody? Do you have any guess? It's a legitimate site, so don't worry. <laughs> Why not? Uh, uh, what, what do you think about this one? Not really. Okay. So I just a few examples. If you have no, haven't noticed, this, there is a one, but there is another one. For example, that one. Maybe in the first view, you haven't noticed that. What's the problem with this one? Just, yeah, another example. Just imagine you, you are using your phone. And your phone, you need to, you got an email. Oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm flying tomorrow. Why not uh, Singapore Airlines? With uh, Singapore Airlines, why not uh, clicking there? That's the trick, you know? So that's the problem. Uh, just a few examples for this one. Singapore Airlines, yeah, you see? Uh, there is a dot uh, behind the E and this one. It's, it's uh, quite tricky. Do you have any uh, guess? R, yeah, the, the last uh, letter, yeah. The R is not like, an, like a native R, like we, here we have in this setup. And you see it? This is how the cyber criminals work. They have, a, I mean, dozen of different, uh, uh, like, uh, domains registered just for the Singapore airline. <laughs> Amazing. And this is really a, a nice trick. My uh, colleague tested this one. He registered the umbrella, and this is, works very nicely. Do you have any guess what is the legitimate one? And uh, you, see, you see, for example, a few ones. This is just an example, but quite very good ones. If, uh, yeah, if we can uh, you know, step a little bit closer. Uh, Milka, Rolex, uh, another Rolex, Ryanair. So it's a very you know, high profile uh, uh, domains are, are, are actually just played with this. So in this case, using the XN minus minus, you see, everywhere is there. There is a, like a table, like a mapping table. If you want to use R, not like a native R, but you would like to replace the, the legitimate R, what you can use it. So it looks like, a, you know, a, on, the, on the internet you can, cite, you can find this site, you know, showing what is, uh, if, you want, if you don't want to use the Z, you know, what uh, you can use instead of the Z. Okay. Uh, actually, my, cust my, my uh, colleague tested as well uh, with this uh, iMessage as well. Without any problem, you see, this is Rolex. So even the iMessage translated uh, or I showed the legitimate one. So in this case, you know, the trick worked very well. And uh, if the other, yeah, you see Office, Office 365. We, if you are, you know, uh, I will share the presentation, you see, the I has a little bit longer, you know, uh, dot. I mean, not like a dot, but uh, uh, a, a long uh, uh, accent. That, that's, uh, that's the trick. So in this case, you can register this uh, not Office 365 domain, but, you know, a little bit different one. And, of course, it, uh, this is Chrome. Uh, show this one. Facebook, uh, Firefox showed the, the, the right one. Only uh, the... Um, Facebook could uh, block it because, it, you know, that contained the X, uh, X and minus minus things. So as you see, it, it was blocked successfully. And uh, even uh, 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 the Snapchat is also showing that uh, as a legitimate site. So even the Gmail showing the right, I mean, the Singapore Airlines. So didn't block uh, the, that uh, malicious content. You see that, uh, that it's... It's quite a very huge trick, and uh, nowadays it's, uh, it's getting worse uh, day by day. Even Twitter, Twitter showing, uh, you know, also the bad uh, domain. Okay, so this is the PUNI code. If you want to test, like, just please visit this uh, umbrella site, and you can test yourself. I tested myself. I cannot demonstrate now, but in the break I can show you. Uh, it's showing, for example, the Safari uh, showing the, uh, as a legitimate site, you know, like umbrella.com. So quite funny. Okay. So this is just a few examples of uh, like a block blockchain uh, company in Turkey. Yeah, Latam, Google Analytics. Uh, the, if the uh, the projector helps here. So just a few examples on this one. Uh, Fox News. And these, these are also quite funny ones. I, I don't want to read all of the things, but you see PayPal, uh, Red Bull, or yeah, Twitter. All of them is just uh, a victim of these uh, Punicode uh, victims or uh, attacks. So this is, this is just Punicode. And uh, 
how we can manage, how can we cope with this uh, Punicode uh, uh, attacks. So one of the things we can do with the newly seen domain. So if it is totally new, you see, this is the domain was registered, X and minus minus P, P L something. So this is currently put into the uh, newly seen category. So it's finally blocked if, if you want to do so. If not, of course, this is totally your uh, setup or your uh, installation. If you want to enable uh, or, or see this kind of new domains, why not? But this is a, a quite huge risk. Uh, malvertising uh, checking is there, and there, there, is, there is another one, which is the Levenstein distance filter. I guess everybody <laughs> heard about, right? <laughs> No, <laughs> probably nobody, yeah? So the, this Levenstein is just nothing else but uh, like a string comparison algorithm. How can you compare two, two, two uh, strings together uh, in order to calculate uh, the distance between these things? So uh, it is nothing else just like a, a kitten to sitting. How many like characters you need to replace in order to get uh, to the final like sitting? So I don't want to read it. So the, uh, starting from the first letter, like K. So you need to replace the K to S. Okay, that one, the next one, uh, you need to replace the, this one, and finally add G. So the value is free. So calculating this distance, is, it helps a lot. If the distance is it's relatively sh uh, short, I mean, quite similar to the legitimate side, the next one, uh, we, what we want to do is just checking the content of the, uh, of the side. So here, <laughs> quite funny. <laughs> I hope that, uh, you know, finally you will fix it because that will be a fun uh, the, for the whole day. So regarding the Levenstein distance with the spy, PayPal is two. So it's relatively, uh, very, relatively close. So therefore this kind of uh, natural language processing helps a lot. And the other one is just the site uh, investigation. If the site looks like, like an original site, it's more than suspicious, right? Because this looks like a fake site, for example, for the PayPal. So therefore, this kind of uh, site can be blocked without any, any, I mean, notice. So if the site similarity is very high, in, in our case, it was like more than uh, 82%. So it's more than enough. So in this case, we can block it immediately. And this is good for the additional database pivoting uh, the other, other uh, uh, things. If this is not the case, of course, human is needed. So somebody needs to see it, needs to check it. Is it a legitimate site or not? So this is like a, you know, a, a procedure how to cope uh, this uh, Punicode example, uh, Punicode things. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it was very quick. So uh, do you cooperate with other DNS uh, providers? Do you share your findings? Yes. Do, yes. You, do you, how to say, coordinate your activities uh, with uh, Cloudflare, with uh, Quad9, with Google, with other uh, resolvers? Yes, we do. And uh, actually, what no, not just uh, providing, uh, I mean, sharing information, but uh, the API is also uh, free. I mean, I mean, available. I wouldn't say free, but because it's, it's a paid service, depending on how many requests you would like to apply. But uh, yeah, the, at, at least the, the database is available. Yeah, the Punicode uh, was interesting. The story, yeah. the concept is interesting. So why doing the same job uh, three times? If uh, already you done it, why not share it uh, yeah, exactly. with others? Yeah, uh, exactly. Exactly. So unfortunately, I have uh, other examples, but time is over also, and the projector that thank didn't you. help too much. So thank you very much for your time, and uh, good luck for the next presentations. <laughs>